Hi everyone, welcome to our Cooking with Gidget show. My name is Joanna Trelove and I'm so excited to share with you one of my favorite gal pals in the kitchen, Miss Gidget. All right, well, I'm not going to steal her shine. I'm going to let her tell you all about her and lead us in a beautiful presentation in cooking. Hi everyone, happy Tuesday afternoon. Um, my name is Gidget Arabi and I um, have been friends with Joanna for a really long time. And I used to be a personal chef. I went to culinary school in San Francisco and I worked under fantastic chefs. I did a lot of um, salad work and soup work and pastries, a lot of pastries. And um, I would say probably 20 years ago, I left San Francisco and came down here to San Diego and changed my culinary outlook to instead of working for restaurants to working for families and doing their weekly meals as a personal chef. And that worked out very well for me um, and for my clients too. So basically what I did is I just went into their home and I cooked all the meals that they were gonna eat for Monday through Friday. And I left, uh, the food in the refrigerator and the freezer and everything was packaged individually with special notes of this sauce is for grandma, she's low sodium, and this one is for Billy, he doesn't like onions. And um, it, it was really fun. And I did that for probably eight years before we um, started a family. And then I took some time off and um, I started going back to chefing when my daughter was five. But I changed that up again and I did specific diets where I basically work with a client who, who wants to accomplish something through their diet, like someone who might have, have type 2 diabetes. Um, I had someone who had depression, someone who had uh, Tourette's. I've had people who just want to lose weight. I've had heart attack survivors. Um, I basically work with my client to find out what they want to eat and how I can get that food in them without it being um, unhealthy and just see what I can do. And I also worked with their nutritionists and their doctors and really found out what they want me to feed their client. And so it was it was a really fun way to um, to get my clients healthy. So um, fast forward five more years from now from then. Um, I took some more time off and I'm still on time off. Um, I homeschooled my now 14 year old daughter for five years. She's um, downstairs distance learning right now. And she's very, very um, involved in theater. So I'm a theater mom besides doing cooking. I make props, I do hair and makeup, I make costumes and I'm busy doing that too. But my, my love is cooking. I talk about cooking day and night um, I dream in cooking. I love food, um, but I lo like to convince people that there are healthier things to eat. And I get in arguments about that sometimes, too. I'm sure you guys get in arguments with your family about, um, you know, gosh, we should be eating something healthy. And then people can't think about what to do. So what I found works best is not what works for most people. But for me, I go to the store or to the farmer's market and I look and see what's in season, what looks best, what's the most colorful, how can I get a rainbow in my family um, every day? And so most people think that they, uh, how it works best is you come up with a menu and you think about what you wanna cook and then you go grocery shopping from there. And that's great, that's totally fine. And actually when I personal chefed, that's how it had to work because my clients had specific diets and I had to stick with that. But um, while in quarantine, I've been having trouble going grocery shopping. It's a little intimidating. Things aren't in stock. Um, it, it's it, it, what I want is not fresh looking. I'm afraid someone sneezed on it, whatever. So I started seeing several of my friends ordering CSA boxes. Um, the, far, the farm boxes that uh, the farmers actually just put together everything that's in season and they send you a box of whatever you get. 
And that was the most exciting for me because I love playing Iron Chef. And so basically what I did here is I wrote out a list. This is a list of all the things that came in my last CSA box. And it was super exciting. And I can read it out loud to you if- um, Did you, will you tell us, will you, um, I hate to interrupt you, but you have said so many valuable things I would love to just ask you a few questions. Tell me what you're saying, CIS, what does that stand for? Where do we get it? How did you find out about this? Tell us more about that. Okay, first of all, I don't know what CSA means. I just, <laughs> certified something, but it's basically they're certified by farmers who normally these these boxes or the people who sell these boxes are the ones who go to the farmer's markets. And um, where I buy mine is, I, I wrote it down at the very bottom here. It's the Yasukochi Family Farms. And I can- um, I When, can, we, are, I can when we are done with food. this, will you, yeah. When, when we, we are, are done with this, will you go ahead and share that in our group feed? Absolutely. That would be wonderful. This is great value because I am like you. I go to the market and I look at some of the fruits and vegetables and it's not as it's not as fresh as I, I would like it to be. And um, our farmers markets are just the way to go every chance you get. But not everybody has the opportunity like you and I do to get to their local markets. And some people aren't even leaving their homes right now. So having this delivered, my goodness, even when quarantine is over, this is such a treat. Tell us more. Oh, OK. <laughs> so um, the Yasukochi farm uh, delivers the food to me um, every Tuesday. Um, here in San Diego, they have a different part of San Diego that they deliver to. So for, and the way you get it is at five o'clock p.m. the week before they deliver, you have to go online and order a box, okay? So a small box is $25 and a jumbo box is 35. A jumbo is basically double the small, okay? And then they also sell jam and honey, and I order two dozen eggs every Tuesday, so I get that delivered. Now, I use Yasukochi Farms because they've just been dependable. I've been able to get online and order it. I've tried three or four other companies and I can, every single time I go online, they're sold out. So what I've found is I, I know the niche you, at five o'clock after this call, I'm going online and I'm going to order my box for next week. So for, um, I think it's San Marcos and Oceanside or Escondido, it's on Monday, Tuesday and Encinitas is another day. Carlsbad is another day. If you go on their website, which I'll give Joanna, you'll have all of that. Um, but the produce is absolutely beautiful. I have, I'm going to give you guys a close up on my phone of um, the last box that was delivered. And where is it? So that's the last box that was delivered. Wow, that's amazing. I've been seeing you um, share with this and it just, you got my attention every time. That's in the colors, like you you had said something earlier, you, you know, feed yourself a rainbow in a day. And I just, I love that phrase. It really helps people gather a visual of the kinds of variety that you can eat. And in doing so, it doesn't limit our fruit or vegetables. And it gives us a whole approach to what wellness is when we give it to ourselves. Good stuff. Thank you. Yes, absolutely. There's um, so that's that's one way that I get my fruits and vegetables. There's also a farmer's market that I go to that's still open on Saturdays. Um, I am also famous for on my Facebook page doing this thing called it's clean out the fridge day. And I've just 
tear out everything. My favorite. I love it when you post that. I can't wait to see what she's doing now. That's my favorite. <laughs> That's the Italian girl in me. That's how my mama taught me to cook. So when you come from those spaces, I'm like, oh, my people. <laughs> yeah, good stuff. So I, I still recall the first time I did a clean out the fridge meal. And, um, and I took a photo of it. Most people don't take a picture of things that they take out of the fridge that has been sitting there for a week or whatever. But me, I, you know, I went to culinary school. I worked in restaurants. I know how to make... I can make an Oreo cookie look fancy on a plate. It's just, <laughs> it's what I do. Um, so the first time I did it, I remember I had um, some meatloaf and I had some bread. I had a peach that had bruises on it. I had some quinoa that had been sitting in a bowl that I had cooked something else with earlier. And I also had my garden. I also have a garden at home. I grow arugula and spinach and herbs. And we can talk about that later too, because I love my garden. But um, I uh, created a grilled, uh, what was it? A grilled meatloaf sandwich with arugula pesto. And- um, You grilled? Did you say you yeah. grilled? Uh -huh. that, that, okay. You're not getting away that fast. Stop. Okay. You had me at meatloaf, but then you said grilled. Tell me more. Well, it, well, it was leftover meatloaf. So I warmed it on, on the grill and I grill the bread. I brush the bread with olive oil and I grill it. And then I put a little cheddar cheese on it. And then I had some, I had some arugula and some walnuts. So of course I made an arugula walnut pesto. <laughs> and and um, then I also made a, uh, a baby green salad and I took the dying peach and I cut it up and put it in there and made a champagne vinaigrette with toasted hazelnuts. And oh, so I was like- people chiming in. And there, you know what they're all saying? I'll give you one guess. Recipe, <laughs> recipe. <laughs> But you guys, I have, I have to tell you, the chef who I trained under, her name is Andrea Rappaport, and she's, I met her in San Francisco. I was a lowly, um, you know, culinary student, and I went to her restaurant several times, and my husband, who was my boyfriend at the time, um, he saw an ad in the paper that they were looking for a pantry chef, which means all you do is make salads and soups and desserts and that's it. And so I was like, am I brave enough to go ask her? Am I brave enough? And um, I went and I got a job. I got paid $6 an hour for two years. <laughs> <laughs> and um, yeah, I, I didn't even make that much when I was 18. I, I made more of it, but uh so she was phenomenal and she was Wolfgang Puck's sous chef um, in, in Las Vegas. So she was phenomenal with, with um, making food look vibrant and beautiful and using wine country style cooking and, and intermingling Mediterranean and Italian and French. And, um, and, I, and we lived up in San Francisco, which is very close to Napa. So when I say, you know, I made this salad with a peach and and um, walnut pesto with arugula and things like that, I was very heavily influenced by the good food that I had up there. Um, on a side note, when I moved from Mill Valley, San Francisco to San Diego, I lost seven pounds the first month of living down here. <laughs> Because just that food from San Francisco wasn't here. So. Well, that's a great that's a great um, moment to just talk about. How how do you you know what can you share? You had mentioned at the very beginning of, of your chat that you really um, took some time in your career to specialize with special diets mm -hmm. and personalizing, you know, for people that had cir circumstances such as disease mm -hmm. or mental health or um, you know you listed a few a few things cancer. Um, what what can you tell us about these special diets and how do they feed each particular situation and how does that make a difference in their life? Well, sure. Um, I'll, I'll use my own family as, as an example. Um, 
my father was on a special diet. He was a heart attack survivor. So he needed to be on low everything pretty much, low fat, low cholesterol. Um, and he was supposed to be on high fiber, but he was on dialysis for his kidneys. And the two diets don't match. They actually fight each other. So I really, really, really had to think of ways to uh, mix the two diets so that they worked and so that his food tasted good. And then my mom has diverticulitis, which is little pockets in your intestines. And when tiny particles of food get caught in there, you, you get um, inflammation. She ended up in the hospital needing surgery uh, two months after my dad had his heart attack. So I was making meals for them. Um, and then for myself, I am gluten intolerant. And that only developed with me less than three years ago. It was like an adult onset thing that took me by surprise. And my husband eats mostly protein and vegetables. And then we have my, she'll be 15 next week, my daughter. She eats everything, but she prefers to eat healthy. I mean, you know, she's going to eat cupcakes and things like that here and there, but um, she's really good about eating what's good for her. So what, um, what I do is I just research the diets as much as I can. And for example, for my dad, I realized, well, he can have cauliflower and, but he loves potatoes. Potatoes are an absolute no, no for someone on a dialysis diet. It brings their, um, their potassium super high up and he, his risk of another heart attack or a stroke increased. So, um, I would, cook cauliflower in a way like he loved um, cauliflower. I'm sorry. He loved corned beef hash. Okay. So I actually created a cauliflower caramelized onion hash with roast beef instead of corned beef. And um, I cooked eggs. I did, I would do like one egg and then like three, three ounces of egg white pour with it. And, I would just give him a little taste of something that's so good with a good sized portion of something that's good for him that he can eat. You know, it, I think that's really a good way to do it is, is make sure that you have the nutrients that you need and, and um, still something that, that is, that tastes really good and you can just sort of mix that. So, um, but for like for my mom, I just make sure she's hilarious. You guys, my mom is 80 years old. She is this tall. If that, she might be this tall. I'm four foot 11. Okay. <laughs> she's super spunky and she picks the seeds out of her strawberries and blueberries every day. It takes her an hour and a half to eat breakfast. <laughs> You have your work. Out. I have video uh, footage. Bless your heart. That's why you're the most patient person I know. She won't take no for an answer. She's like, I can eat blueberries. <laughs> she cuts them out. So, so we, um, now I, I found, like I said, when I lost seven pounds, when I came here, it was basically because I was just eating fresher foods. I found myself in a more of a, in a lifestyle where I wanted to be outside more in San Francisco. It's cold. Um, and it's a city. It's not, you know, you, there's this excitement, but I went out more at night and with friends. And then when I moved down here, I was like, Oh my gosh, I'm going to the beach every other day, taking walks. And just it. I started feeling that way. And what's interesting is when you start, start feeling good, you don't want to put the junk in your body you actually start craving things that are better for you. And when you eat something that doesn't taste good or that's bad for you, you feel it pretty intensely. And I, I don't know anyone who hasn't eaten something super bad for them and gone, I'm dieting tomorrow. You know, it's just, uh, yeah. you're yeah. And you the older we get, the less tolerance we have to eat poorly. Our, our minds might remember what that felt like and be like, that's a great idea. But then we go and do it and we're like, wow, that that wasn't as good as an idea. As I, I loved it more than it loved me. <laughs> yes, my I, I sadly I, I say to my husband, why do you eat like a 10 year old? 
every every so often. Or sometimes it turns into you're eating like a 14 year old again. Like, look, look at what you're eating. Your stomach can't handle that. <laughs> I'll have to think how old I am when I'm running in the taco stand. <laughs> I know. It's like, oh, it's crazy. Oh, and it's Cinco de Mayo. Get ready. <laughs> yeah. So um, as, as far as, as, you know, just getting into a healthier lifestyle, for me, it was just where I was at. Um, my sister lives in New York in the city, and um, it's much more difficult for her. Like she, she said she can't get a fresh strawberry or blueberry or anything um right now everything is frozen um she gosh even with chicken she said today they they went shopping last week and this week the only thing they can get are chicken drumsticks and that's it and i feel so um lucky to be living where we are to be able to get what we have and i don't know if some of you tuning in might be in other places other than southern california and so i have to say i feel for you um i talk to my sister every day what is your take on frozen fruit and vegetables? Um, I've heard mixed reviews. I've always uh, was shocked when when I heard that th they're not so bad for you, especially if you can't get them fresh at the market. What what do you think about all that? Yeah, well, I mean, it kind of makes sense because they basically, from what I know about it, is they pick it, they clean it, and they flash freeze it. So its nutrients really aren't lost on you. Um, how what you do from it there is. Is, is up to you. Um, let me say, as someone who has so much experience with cooking and um, especially cooking for people who have a texture problem, frozen vegetables are really rough on people who do texture because they're mushier. So there are things that you can do, for example, um, buy uh, for green beans, for example, I buy French sliced frozen green beans and I use that in my stir fry instead of the long ones. Because if you know, if you notice when you bite into a, fro a cooked frozen green bean, it's soggy, there's no crunch to it. Um, it, it. It tastes like you're getting water in your mouth with every bite. And that, so knowing how, I mean, I, I don't, I'm not too versed on frozen fruits and vegetables. Um, but that's that's one thing that I noticed, and and don't overcook them. But they're my sister. She actually uh, buys the frozen peppers and the frozen carrots and everything. And she just she said she turns her oven on 450 degrees, puts olive oil on it, salt and pepper, and roasts everything. And she said it turns out. I never thought about roasting frozen vegetables. That's a great tip. Now, you um, had mentioned something like what you do with your vegetables can change. You know, I would hate to use the word denature, but that's the science to me. How does how, how does that affect um, the value of what's in our food that we're eating? Um, what a question, I know. <laughs> I don't think I'm qualified to answer all that because I'm not a nutritionist, but for what I can tell you texture wise, what you do, it's going to change how it tastes. And, mm -hmm. um, but I, I, I have heard that, you know, like for example, we, we're told to wash everything as well as you can before you store it right now. But there are certain things that if you wash it, it's going to rot in the refrigerator in one day. Um, like I'll tell you guys Maybe the best that's way to my problem. Oh my gosh. I find that all the time. I can't tell you how frustrating it is. I'll get back from the market, wash my berries, put them back in the container, put it in the refrigerator. And then the next day they're rotten. Is that what it's from? Truly? Yeah. Okay. Yes. But so let me tell you the secret. Um, blueberries. I, you know, they're okay. You could probably wash them a little bit. Um, but raspberries and blackberries and strawberries all, all just, just starch them. Um, I have a trick and it only works for strawberries. So what I do is I fill a bowl with about two thirds with cool water and then about a half cup of white vinegar. I wash my strawberries first 
And then I put those strawberries and I let them soak for five minutes in the cool water vinegar mixture. And then after five minutes, I strain it, I rinse it. Then you have to let the strawberries dry on a towel. And then, and then you can put them in a bowl or a Pyrex that's lined with a paper towel because you need something to absorb the moisture. And you can put it in the fridge and they will stay fresh for probably four or five days. Um, I did that last week with my CSA box. I, they gave me two giant things of strawberries, enough to feed 10 people. And so I did that and just, I think, when was it? Oh, this morning. This morning I finished the last strawberry and um, it, it was getting pretty close to not looking so nice, but, but they looked bright and vibrant and fresh. Now with, with um, the other types of berries, you can't do that. As soon as you wash them, you've got to use them immediately. I used to make whipped cream cakes and pavlovas in a, in a bakery. And um, I remember the chef would just scream at us if we said, oh, I'm food prepping for tomorrow. And he'd be like, you can't do that. Everything's going to go rotten. And so <laughs> we learned. Um, he didn't say, oh, there you go. Share with you guys if, if you don't mind. Um, some ideas of what I do with my CSA box. Um, it's, I have a lot of fun trying to figure out what I'm gonna make. And so I'm just gonna read off everything that's on, that came in my box the last time. And so that you can see, um, there are, I think three items that weren't in the box that came like, like I got this on, in one week and I got that in the other week. So basically um, I got, I had a jumbo box, okay? They sent a good size watermelon, enough to feed us for the whole week. I got about eight caracara oranges, four mandarins, two pints of strawberries, some blueberries. I got romaine lettuce. Another week I got iceberg lettuce. It's a different week. Um, I got beets. I got kale another week. Um, one week I, I got bok choy. So when they do the leafy greens, they generally will send you like one type. Um, so one week I got Roman. In the big box, they give you a huge thing of cauliflower and three crowns of broccoli, an enormous eggplant, some scallions, sweet potatoes, russet potatoes. Are you telling me you got this all for thirty dollars? Uh, thirty-five dollars. But but like, wow. like I said, uh, with the leafy greens, they you know I th I so I've had four boxes, and so. They don't give you all that. Um, so like, for example, if we go here, 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 on, on, uh, oh, are you still there, Joanna? I can't see you. Yep, I just put it down because I wanted to give you the full screen so everyone okay. can see your whiteboard. Oh, no, that's fine. That's fine. Okay, as long as I just thought you were gone. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm right here. I'm so, just going to um, give you the full screen so everyone can see your whiteboard. I'll be back. Excellent. So we'll continue. Uh, they gave us a huge cauliflower, giant three, three crowns of broccoli, um, a giant eggplant, scallions, about three sweet potatoes, four russets, um, I got three avocados, a container of snap peas. I got three tomatoes, some cherry tomatoes. Um, one time I got basil. Another time I got mint. And I got grapefruit. Give me asparagus once. So what I like go well together. And if you eat meat, you would also say, okay, what meats go well together? So for example, let's say I wanted to say, okay, I have in my refrigerator, I have ground turkey and I have, um, oh, I have beef tri-tip and I have some salmon. So I would go from there and then sort of, those are my three 
faces and then I decorate my plate with everything else that's on here. And I say, okay, you know, oh, also let's say I have chicken breast. This is, this is an easy one. Okay, I'm gonna make a marinated chicken breast and I'm gonna marinate it in tamari because I'm gluten-free with some lime juice and some ginger and garlic and a little bit of uh, cooking oil. And that could go well with any one of these. Once I grill that, if I do the chicken breasts, I can do some greens. I can either choose to do beet greens, I can do romaine, I can do um, kale, and then I will toss in some watermelon or some cara cara orange or mandarins or strawberries or blueberries. Well, actually that also works with the, um, the steak. If I marinated and grilled the tri-tip steak, I could eat that with maybe some baked sweet potatoes or um, russet. Oh wait, I just noticed there was more in the box. We also got zucchini, yellow and yellow squash, and celery and carrots. Okay, so um, with my with my steak, I would think that if I made sweet potato zucchini little fritters, that would be really good. And then maybe two days later, I cut up the leftovers from the steak and I make a salad and that would actually go well with the oranges or the blueberries. Um, and then I want a spice in there, so I'm gonna add some of the scallions. Um, I just think about if I was looking at a menu, what kind of things would pop out at me that, that sound like they taste good together? And that's how I create my, my menus. Now, for people at home, I would suggest that you take the ingredients that pop out at you that you think would go well together and you Google recipe and let's say watermelon, snack peas, and basil. And then believe it or not, someone's made a recipe that's like that. And then you just read the reviews and you see the comments and see if that works. I don't think I would care for a watermelon snack pea basil salad, but it actually wouldn't be that bad if you think about it, if you just put a little bit of basil. Um, now, I, um, I belong to different Facebook groups where we share food and, and things like that. And I've seen a lot of people posting about eggplant right now. Um, I did, when they gave me the eggplant, my family loves eggplant parmesan. And so me being healthier, I didn't want a big gooey casserole in this heat. And so I looked up healthy eggplant crispy dishes and Google sent me this recipe that was for um, eggplant sticks that I just roll in gluten-free flour with a little bit of egg white and um, and I baked them and made a tomato sauce. I used my tomatoes and my basil for my tomato sauce. And um, let's see, that night I also made a salad that was, um, so I had some fennel that I bought. I made shaved fennel with shaved celery and um, with a lemon juice and some nuts and things like that. But basically this, I, I, I think you can't go wrong unless, unless you don't like cooking, then maybe don't do this. But uh, for $35, I was able to keep my refrigerator stocked for almost two weeks. So what I do is I buy a big box and, um, and then I use it for two weeks and then I buy a small box and then I buy another big box and I just sort of rotate it. So for my family, we have four in our family and um, my daughter and my mom and I and my dad. No, sorry, my husband, not my dad. And we're able to make this last for a very long time. Um, let's see, uh, for the broccoli, I made a crustless broccoli quiche and I used the scallions in that. Um, today is 
Cinco de Mayo. So I would suggest doing a sweet potato and chili uh, taco with um, massaged kale and uh, make an avocado uh, Back it up, to go with Back that. It up. Um, You're telling there, me, hold the it. show, hold the show. You're telling me that you would make tacos out of sweet potatoes and kale? I oh, need more. Yeah. Right, I want, come on, bring it on. I want to hear about this. So I was at a concert. Um, what is what is that concert that's in San Diego every year? The big Kaboo. Yes. So I was at Kaboo two years ago, and I remember um, this is really funny, 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 funny. Uh, we were watching the Red Hot Chili Peppers, and everyone around us was smoking the good stuff. And what are you talking about? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. And it certainly wasn't me or you. <laughs> so so. Um, so, but, you know, I mean, to be honest, I have never smoked anything before, but I, uh, we had just eaten, seriously, we had just eaten chili fries and a lot of it, maybe like 45 minutes before the show. Then all of a sudden, my husband and I look at each other, we go, we're so hungry. Oh my gosh. It was the, 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 the effect of everyone else smoking around us. And so we went to this little food truck that was there and they had... Um, chili rub, roasted sweet potato, caramel onion, and um, corn with green peppers. And they made a um, sriracha crema and and a and sliced avocados. And they had some kale in there and some salsa. And I just went, I mean, it was so grub. It was so, so good. I was eating my fingers. And I said to my husband, I said, I can do better than this. And this is bomb. This is so good. So I went home and I just worked my magic. I got my sweet potatoes. I peeled them and made them in half inch pieces. And I took a little bit of olive oil, um, a good dose of uh, salt and pepper and chili powder and some cumin. And I roasted those until they were just crispy, but not, not too, you know, not falling apart. And um, I got some corn and I grilled it. So it had that good flavor. And um, let's see, I looked up a recipe for uh, crema, which is uh, avocado crema, which was basically sour cream, mayonnaise and avocado with lime juice. And um, and then so this what I didn't like about their taco uh, was the kale. And I'm sure you guys have had this before. You're eating a salad that has kale in it and you can feel the texture, it's rough. It's almost like trying to eat paper. You're just like, nya, nya, nya. oh, this is so good for me. Um, I don't know if you know this, but before you eat a kale salad, you are supposed to put the kale in a separate bowl, take the ribs out and have them all in like one each, one inch pieces. Wait, you're saying you should cut that, that hard piece? Mm -hmm. You're supposed to remove it? Yes. Oh. It's totally, Are we going to die if we don't? What's going to happen? No, I'm eating. <laughs> no, it's totally, it's totally edible. This is just for the enjoyment of the salad. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> to make the kale so palatable and so enjoyable. So, so what you do is you can, you can, if this is, if this is my kale, my leaf is all, it's all leafy. You hold on to one side, you grip it and you go, whoosh, and the rib will just come out. Oh, yeah. Great so, chair. I mean, you generally you have to tear off some little pieces, but it's perfect. And then cut them in one inch pieces. And this is what you got to do. If I have, let's say I have six leaves of kale for two of us, and I'm going to peel all that off, put it in a bowl. I drizzle that with a tablespoon of olive oil and about a quarter to a half teaspoon of kosher salt. And then you're going to massage the whole thing, see how my hand is, and, and you wanna be rough. You wanna be like, your shoulders are really aching, man. I gotta massage you. And you He's massage your mama workout, little shoulder yes. workout with our really? kale. <laughs> and so when, when Cassidy was little, I would say, baby, I'm gonna massage the kale. You wanna come help me? She's like, yes, yes. And she comes in, 
She's massaging the kale and it makes it like the tender oh, spinach. We need to make a TikTok. Let's do that. Massage the, the kale. kale. Massage the kale. <laughs> <laughs> this is a whole movement in itself. Massage the kale. <laughs> So you do that for 30 seconds, you massage the kale, the salt breaks it down, um, the fibrous tissue on there, and the olive oil just makes it, helps rub it in there. So then I would I would put that, I would chiffonade it. Chiffonade means to cut it, cut it into ribbons. Um, and you can chiffonade it before you massage it. That's a lot easier. And so I would put that in my taco with the roasted sweet potatoes, with the crema, with I would cut the grilled corn off there. And um, what else would I put in there? Oh, I, I just want you to know that um, this is what I'm making for dinner tonight. So keep keep all those details. They're beautiful. Definitely. This is great. And I have all those ingredients in my refrigerator. So Excellent. I can do a good clean out refrigerator and make mm -hmm. tacos for de Mayo. Yes. Yes. Then you have to post it and you have to tag me and say, I cleaned out my refrigerator. <laughs> I will, for sure. I'll take the challenge. <laughs> yes. So, so um, basically, that's how I came up with the sweet potato tacos with the kale. Um, funny, funny side story. So Cassidy, my daughter, uh, she really enjoys a kale salad. And when we go out to eat, she'll usually order one. Um, she was probably eight years old. And we were at Bodine Bakery and she ordered a kale salad. And she said to me, she goes, she goes, I really don't care for this. I, the, it's, it's very hard to eat. And she asked for, for me for a pen. And I said, sure. She got a napkin and she wrote a letter to the chef and explained to him or her how you need to massage kale and how to do it. And she wrote a whole thing. <laughs> I love that girl. I love her. I love her. I love her as much as I love you. Beautiful. And I'm so grateful that that was Gia's best buddy. Oh, <laughs> yeah, they were so cute. So, um, but there's, there are ways you can do that um, to make food more palatable. Did you know, did you know that you can eat the entire beet ex except for the skin? You can eat the greens, the stem, the inside. Um, so I make a, a beet soup that, and, and I'm sorry, I apologize, you guys, I don't have recipes because I cook from my stomach. I say, what sounds good right now? <laughs> you know what, say that again. I cook, what do you cook from? My stomach. <laughs> and that's what we call intuitive cooking. True. And that's what this week is all about, is coming from a place of knowing and listening to yourself and listening to what you need and knowing what is best for you and, and, and allowing yourself to be that expert and saying, yes, I do know enough to take care of myself and I do know what I need. And I don't, I don't need to go for this expert advice on how to be the best version of me. I just need to go inside. And so I love that you share that because cooking can be from your stomach. That's wonderful. Yeah. I think your body knows, it knows what it needs. And, um, my daughter has even said, like today, she said, she goes, mommy, I really need some some fresh veggies. My body is telling me I've been, I had, she had, um, I made gluten-free cupcakes over the weekend because we had two birthdays that we were celebrating in Zoom parties. So we ate the cupcakes while we were celebrating the, the people. And she was like, I had one earlier and I can feel it in my body and it just doesn't feel good. I need, I need fuel that's going to make me feel lighter and make me feel better and yeah and that's that's always a promise to myself i i am a foodie just like you mm -hmm. and i love you know parodies and i love great cooking and i love all different kinds of fusions but like we said they don't always love me back and i always mm -hmm. make the promise that if i indulge in something which is just sultry and divine and isn't necessarily good for me I always make up for it by imploding a big bowl of a yummy, yummy salad, you know, yes. with sprouts and seeds and grains and greens and color. I make sure that if I'm going to indulge, I've already fed to the rainbow. Yes, yes. Um, I mean, we could probably talk for weeks on, on, on how, how wonderful that makes you feel. And uh, I just, 
I love seeing your food posts. They they all like I do, and and I I've told you before. You you yourself, you're a very nourishing person, and so it just comes through. I can feel you just by looking at what you're eating. It might be a bagel. But I feel the same way about you. Yeah, indeed. Yeah, perfect. So I love what you're sharing about this box. Um, how did the tacos end up coming out? Uh, were they fantastic? Did you surpass the, the original chef? Oh, they were phenomenal. I absolutely, I forgot I also added some black beans, you know, just for fiber. I tried to make sure, which I'm sure you all do, is forget the four food groups. Um, what, whatever my body is needing, I'm gonna put in there. So being that I was gonna put in um, so many carbs, you know, cause it's corn tortillas and sweet potatoes and this and this and that. That's why I added the kale. Um, I also, um, I've done it where it, um, I add some multicolored quinoa in there because it's so high in protein and fiber. Um, I've put um, cumin roasted garbanzo beans instead of sweet potatoes. Um, you just have to think about what you've, you've got and then call me and I'll help you. <laughs> okay. We all want your number. <laughs> Is everyone reading? Did everyone just hear this? I have it on record. She says we can call her anytime I, and be like, teach it. I have all these ingredients in my refrigerator. What do I do with them? <laughs> Guys have no, you have no idea. I get that text or a phone call or an email probably five times a week. And um, my husband always says, you should charge people. <laughs> I'm like, what am I gonna do, charge them for this? But I mean, I guess maybe I could make some sort of business out of it, but uh, I'm happy to do it right now. I, I love giving back to my friends who make me feel so good. It's it's a pleasure and it makes me happy when they make something and and, tell me that that it was it was a success or if they didn't and then i can tell them well tell me what you did and we usually find out like the other day someone was telling me she was make she didn't have any mayonnaise and she wasn't going to the store there was no way so i taught her i sent her a recipe for homemade mayonnaise and her mayonnaise would not um, coagulate it kept what it's called breaking so while you're trying to whisk it it's basically egg and and oil that you're whisking into an emulsion and um, it's like an aioli, basically. And so she was making such a small batch that it just wouldn't work. So I was able to help her over the phone without looking at it. <laughs> and um, it was really fun. Well, Gidget, thank you so much. You've given us some amazing tips today. I'm going to go ahead and take my screen down and let you bring us home on this talk today and uh, share with us whatever else I didn't interrupt and <laughs> turn you sideways on. So go ahead and wrap this all around and bring us home, girl. I'm shutting down and I'll be back up when you're done. Okay. Okay. Thanks. All right. Take it away. Thank you. So thank you guys so much for tuning in. This was way more fun than I thought it was going to be. Um, I knew that I wanted to share what I do in a way that uh, would hopefully inspire you. I thought about maybe I should cook for you guys, um, but that's one recipe. And I wanted to share so much more and just give ideas to make you go, you know what? I can do this. I can do this. And look at the list of things that came in my CSA box. Hopefully, wherever you live, there's uh, the boxes are available to you. I'm going to email Joanna the information where I buy mine. Um, there are also, like, for example, in Orange County, there is cheap, so there's a, a farm. I can't remember the name of it. Um, but it's in Irvine. But it's just a farm stand, and they're doing farm boxes. Here in Carlsbad, in the strawberry field, they're also doing farm boxes. So just, I would keep looking for it. They're really so fun to use. Um, if there's any ingredients that you don't know what to do with, just Google, what do I make with this? My recommendation is you read the notes that people have written. You don't try anything that is less than four and a half stars on a five star scale, just, just skip it. And, um, and you just have fun. Thanks so much for watching. I will definitely give Joanna the information on ordering that. If you guys have questions, 
I keep it around. Thank you, Gidget. You're sensational. I don't need to say a word. You said it all. Um, I, I, I'm so gracious in receiving your share because um, it's it's remarkable. And and what happens when we just allow ourselves to be who we are? We unfold in ways that tell stories that you know going to an appointment or, or showing up for some center or workshop just can't always do. It's it's so much. It's so much greater when we can just have a chat like this off the cusp and share who we are and get into conversation about things that feel good to us and unfold naturally and organically, just like the fruit in that box you're getting. <laughs> so we would all be so grateful if you could share with us some of your tips and recipes posted on our Facebook group. Um, we would love, uh, you know, us, us folks. Us peeps at I Am Love um, are grateful to have you um, part of our group, and we hope that you can come back and continue to share the health and the wealth that you have uh, within your heart and your tummy and in your fridge <laughs> and in your box. <laughs> and maybe you can give us a demonstration on massaging the, um, the kale. <laughs> No, on, on, a, on a lighter note, I really just want to say thank you so much. And we appreciate you donating your time to I Am Love because uh, I know that you, like me, value uh, contributing to our communities and sharing, you know, that passion that we have within us, knowing how valuable it is and how it can support and help someone else in their healing and in their health as well. So thank you. Thank you very much. All right. Well, everyone, that's a wrap. Thank you so much for helping with the Gidget. And uh, I'm going to throw up that real big peace sign and say, we're out of here. Peace. Have a great day, everybody. Until next time. Bye.